Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. Very happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for being here. My name is Stephen Gilbo. I'm uh, Canada's Minister of Environment and Climate Change. We're here to talk about the Canada carbon rebate, which is one thing you'll never hear Pierre Polyev talk about. But the reality is that over the past few years, in fact, since 2019, Can 8 out of 10 Canadians, low income to middle income Canadians, get more money back than they're paying for, for, for carbon pricing. That is a reality. That is a fact. And as carbon pricing goes up, so does the carbon rebate. The carbon rebate will go up April 1st, as will carbon pricing uh, as well. Uh, Pierre Poliev uh, was lying uh, last week when he said that there's no price on pollution for, for, for large polluters. That's simply not true. In fact, the price on pollution is much higher for, for our biggest polluters than it is for, for average Canadian, as it should be. And, and that continues to, 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 to go up. And they don't get a rebate because they should be paying as, as, as large emitter, as large, as, as large polluters. And the other thing you'll never hear Pierre Poliev talk about is the impacts of climate change and how much it's impacting Canadians, how much it's costing Canadians. We're talking about our fish stocks disappearing. There's no, there's no shrimp in the Gulf of St. Lawrence this, this summer. We're talking about Al the province of Alberta having to ration water for, for residents, for businesses, for the agricultural sector. Climate change is real, it's impacting Canadians, and it's costing Canadians, and you'll never hear Pierre Poliev talk about that. Alors, nous sommes ici pour parler de la redevance canadienne sur, sur le carbone, une chose dont vous n'entendrez jamais Pierre Poliev parler. Euh, D'abord, il ment aux Québécois et aux Québécoises quand il, parle, quand il dit que la tarification carbone s'applique au Québec. Ça ne s'applique pas. Le Québec a son propre système de tarification du carbone qui existe depuis, depuis 2013. Il a menti à la population la semaine dernière quand il a dit qu'il n'y avait pas de prix pour les grands pollueurs. C'est bien au contraire. Il y a un prix très élevé pour, pour, la, pour, pour les grands pollueurs et ils n'ont évidemment pas de, pas de rabais, contrairement, contrairement à huit personnes sur dix qui reçoivent dans les provinces où la tarification car, carbone s'applique plus qu'elle ne paye. Et c'est le cas depuis 2019. Et, et troisièmement, Pierre Poliev ne parle jamais des impacts des changements climatiques sur les Canadiens et les Canadiennes, que ce soit la sécheresse en Alberta où présentement on manque d'eau. Au Canada, on n'est pas dans un pays euh, où il y a des, des manques d'eau. Nous avons 20 des ressources d'eau douce au monde et nous commençons à manquer d'eau à cause des impacts des changements climatiques. Il n'y a pas de crevettes cette année dans le, dans le fleuve Saint-Laurent, dans, dans, dans le golfe du fleuve. Nous subissons les impacts des changements climatiques. Les coûts des changements climatiques ont augmenté de dix fois au cours de la dernière décennie, et ça, Pierre Poliev ne vous en parlera jamais. Merci. Je passerai la parole maintenant à Marcy Guillen, mm -hmm. ma collègue Marcy Guillen. Oh, merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you so very much, Stephen. Uh, when we think about who this impacts, I'm here to talk about young people, because for young people in this country, this isn't about if climate change is a thing or whether or not climate change is making an impact. It's the fact that it is. And this is the cohort, this is the group in Canada that has been ringing the bell about climate change for a very long time. It's not if, it is now. I want to mention something that Minister Guibault mentioned because it's important to have facts and have numbers. And in my Ontario riding, the rebate means $1,124 back. And that is significant. That money can go a long way young people and their families, that money can go a long way. Last week, it was one of the warmest days on record in Toronto. So for anybody, if Mr. Polyev is ever suggesting, and he does, uh, that climate change isn't a thing, you need only point at that. We need only look west, and I'm sure Minister Sajjan will talk about this, to the wildfires, we need to look to the Arctic and all these other places to know that this exists. The last thing that I will say is who pays the bill? If we are to defer action on climate change, if we are to sit pat and say, well, it's just fine, who pays that bill? Young people pay the bill. And we won't let that happen. We are here to act, and we are here to act in the best interests of Canadians and young Canadians. Thank you so much. Everybody's so polite. Everybody's so polite. Hi, everyone. My name is Adam Vancouverden. I'm proud to be the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, as well as to the Minister of Sport and Physical Activity. And what I was hoping to talk, I'm very proud to be here with my colleagues standing up for climate action today. The cost of doing nothing is simply untenable. 
uh, we know that climate change is not only real, uh, but we have an obligation as Canadians to stand up against it, to lower our emissions, and to ensure that we're also there for Canadians during this affordability crisis. I also wanted to talk about inflation today because we got the inflation numbers from February back and inflation is once again down in Canada, which is really good news. And actually, inflation was driven down by lower grocery prices. Now, food's still too expensive. Life's still too expensive in Canada. But the proposition that the Conservatives have brought forward to help Canadians with that affordability crisis is one thing. They say axe the tax repeatedly over and over again, and it's been proven by numbers, by facts, by economists across this country that will hurt the lowest income Canadians the most. Climate change is not something that should be political, to be quite frank. We have to go back to the 2019 election when the failed Conservative leader, Andrew Scheer, ran on a campaign to actually increase Canada's emissions. I've been on television with Andrew Scheer four times in the last seven days, and every time he's reiterated his plan, his failed Conservative plan, to raise emissions in Canada. He might not say it explicitly, but what he says is Canada has the opportunity to raise our emissions and help other countries lower it. Canadians are responsible people. We want to stand up and step up and make sure that we're accountable for our own emissions. Not only does the Canada carbon rebate send more money back to 8 out of 10 families, which happen to be the 8 out of 10 families who need it the most, it also supports um, our economy throughout difficult times. We've seen uh, the price on pollution gradually increase over the last three years as inflation since July 2022 has come down. Now, we've also seen uh, the government of the Bank of Canada and various economists across this country point to the very, very small amount uh, that the, 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 the carbon pricing adds to inflation. We've also heard from economists and food pricing experts that uh, the carbon price does not markedly increase the cost of food. We've seen things start to return to normal and we're hoping desperately hoping that the Conservatives will provide some type of insight about what their plan is to lower our emissions and fight climate change because over and over we hear from Andrew Scheer that his plan is to give up on climate change and allow Canada's emissions to continue to increase. That's irresponsible, that's reckless, and it's not what we're here for. I'd like to pass the, the microphone over to Minister Harjit Sajjan. Thank you, Adam. I'm, uh, I'm the uh, Minister of Emergency Preparedness, um, but I have been looking at and visiting disaster zones since I, uh, I came to government. And I can tell you, over the years, things have gotten worse. The, the cost of inaction is going to be grave. Uh, when you look at the impacts that, uh, just from last year alone, the wildfires, first actually started with floods. There were some places in Northwest Territories that they dealt with floods and immediately wildfires um, afterwards. People's homes were burnt. When I visited uh, West Kelowna, and the entire town uh, uh, was burning, you saw the impacts uh, that was actually uh, taking place. And we talk about wildfires, we talk about the floods, but let's not forget about the heat domes. How many hundreds of Canadian seniors were killed because of the heat domes? This is the cost that, that we're talking about. So we cannot afford this. Imperial Polyev is playing with fire, and we cannot afford that. I'm wondering if you could address Bonnie Crombie's comment yesterday that her, her party, her Liberal Party in Ontario, would not include a carbon price in an Ontario uh, election platform. Why do you think uh, you know, a, a Liberal uh, provincial leader is saying no to carbon pricing? Well, the federal, we've put in place a federal system so provinces who didn't want to do it wouldn't have to do it. They can fall back on, on, on the federal system, which is what many of them have done, and, and, and they can certainly do that. That's how, that's how the system was built. But if, if there is no federal carbon price, she is not planning to include a support for carbon pricing in her platform. She does not support carbon pricing at this point. Why, what, what do you say to the idea that a provincial liberal leader in Ontario is not supporting carbon pricing? Well, my understanding of her position was that she would be happy to fall back to the federal system. But la première chose que je voudrais dire, c'est que mon, mon désir le plus profond, c'est de pouvoir collaborer avec le gouvernement du Québec sur cette question-là. C'est pourquoi, à la fin de 2022, nous avons signé une lettre d'entente sur le caribou qui, qui prévoyait que nous allions travailler ensemble. Nous nous donnions comme objectif de protéger 65 de l'habitat du caribou au Québec. Et le fédéral est prêt à investir, à supporter le Québec là-dedans. Alors, le Québec s'est engagé à faire ça. On devait avoir la stratégie en juin dernier. Il y a eu les feux de forêt. Je pense que tout le monde comprenait que la stratégie pouvait être retardée un peu à cause des feux de forêt. Mais là, ça fait presque un an 
Là, euh, je veux dire, ce n'est plus un retard, c'est une excuse. Et, et moi, j'ai une obligation législative de protéger le caribou et, et son habitat. Je, je préfère, encore une fois, de loin le faire en collaboration, mais si le Québec ne me donne d'autre choix, je devrais retourner au cabinet et recommander que nous intervenions de façon plus musclée du, au niveau fédéral. De, de quelle façon, oui, oui, oui. quoi les options, dans le fond, pour une intervention plus musclée? De, de quoi on parle? Là? Bien, on, le, le, la loi sur les espèces en péril prévoit que le gouvernement fédéral peut mettre en place un décret d'urgence pour protéger l'habitat d'une espèce. Je l'ai déjà fait, par exemple, dans le cas de, de la, grenouille, la renette faugrillon, la grenouille renette faugrillon sur la rive sud de Montréal. Donc, ce genre de mesures-là. BDO says that the um, carbon price is a net loss for um, most Canadian households when you go beyond just what they pay in the fuel charge and what they get back in the rebates when you factor in the whole economic picture. Is the PBO wrong in that assessment? Well, I, I think the PBO was the first one to, to admit in his report that he did not factor in the impacts of climate change. So it's not the full picture. It's a partial picture. And as we know, the cost of climate change have basically an Arjit could, could talk about that. Like, we've, we've gone from average cost per year in Canada, uh, about a little over a decade ago, of $200 million per year, to average cost of $2 billion per year. It will go up because of the forest fires, the floodings that, w that we've had last year. So Canadians are paying for that. And, and Pierre Polyev will never talk about that. He, in fact, he can't. I haven't heard him say the words climate change before. Monsieur Guilbeau, um, uh, your predecessor, Catherine McKenna, has said that your government has not explained this policy. Canadians don't understand it, basically. So you're talking about no shrimp in the St. Lawrence, and you're talking about all the forest fires and everything. Do you think they understand the link between carbon pricing and the impact on the environment? Have, has that been explained? Can you explain it? How does carbon pricing mitigate the impact on the environment? Well. As my department presented uh, in, uh, just before Christmas, carbon pricing will account for about a third of our emission reduction by, by 2030. And unfortunately, when it comes to climate change, there's no on-off switch. It's going to take a long time before we can, we can tackle this issue, just like it, it's taking a long time. For example, we were talk I, I had the, the, the privilege and honor to go and pay my respect to Prime Minister Mulroney this morning. Um, he was responsible for the 1987 Montreal Protocol on ozone depletion. We know now that the ozone layer will have recovered from decades of human abuse probably by, by, by 2060, more or less. So 1987 to 2060, that's the, type, that's the kind of time frame we're, we're looking at to tackle an issue like climate change, maybe even longer. But we need to act now. The more we wait, the more we will suffer the impacts of climate change. The more Canadians will be impacted by, by heat domes, by forest fires, by floodings, by, by coastal erosions, by, by sea level rise. And, and, and carbon pricing will provide about 30% of our emission reduction by 2030. So if there's someone somewhere that can show me a measure that comes at no cost to, to, to Canadian taxpayers because it's revenue neutral, that can give us a third of our emission reduction, I'd, I'd like to hear it because I've been working on this for 30 years. That's all I've done as an adult, working on climate change, and there's no such measures lying around. There is billions, there is billions in revenues from mm -hmm. carbon pricing that you promised Indigenous communities and small business and medium, small and medium businesses that you have not returned. What's your plan with that? Why hasn't that money gone back to these people? We're working hard to make sure that this money can be returned as rapidly as possible. Yeah, MVP uh, John Fraser was saying that to get societal change that you want to get with something like the uh, carbon price, you need to make sure people are going with you. You've been talking, the government here has been talking about the carbon rebate since as long as this policy has existed. 2019. People aren't following along with it. Like, is this really going to change anything in the minds of people feeling the affordability pinch right now? I think we can always do better when it comes to communicating on climate change. But as many of us have said, in the past, since 2019, when we've put that measure in place, eight out of 10 Canadians, low income to middle income Canadians, get more money back than they pay. That's a fact. Like you go back and you look at the numbers from 2019 to 2023, they, eight out of 10 Canadian families get more money back. We can, we can always do better when it comes to communicating, and we will certainly be working on that. You've been, you've been saying that for months now. The, it's not just conservative premiers and the opposition that are undermining it. You've been saying for months you need to communicate better. Do you have any concrete plan on how you're going to do that instead of just repeating the, the same talking points that aren't resonating with people? 
I think it's a complex issue, and we need to continue communicating on it with, with Canadians. You might have seen that we, we, we put out a, a new climate literacy campaign uh, on traditional media, social media. I was even in the Super Bowl um, on, 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 on climate change and helping Canadians better understand the realities of climate change. Communicating on carbon pricing will certainly be an element of that as well going forward. What would the harm be of a pause right now? That's what premiers like Anthony Fear are asking for. They're not asking to get rid of it. They're asking for a pause on the increase this year. What would the harm be in the government's plans if it didn't go to $80 and it stayed at 65 for one more year? Those premiers who talk about the need to pause never talk about the fact that as carbon pricing goes up, for families, the rebates also go up. That's a, that, 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 that's a fact. Yes, but the cost of climate change are, are also going up. And we can't put climate change on pause. We can't put climate impacts on pause. And if Canada doesn't do its fair share when it comes to fighting climate change, how can I go and talk to China or India or other countries in the world and say, hey, let's work together on finding a solution to climate change because there's only one way that we solve this and it's together. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.